It was about, he gave, I think it was $19,000 at the time. Which was a lot of money at that time. So George Harrison was interested in Krishna consciousness and he, so he wrote a message about Krishna. And he, he, he said in his message, he said, everyone is looking for Krishna. Not everybody knows they're looking for him, but they are. And then he explains how Krishna is God and he has many names. He said like Allah, Buddha, Jehovah, Rama, all are Krishna. And then he went on to explain that this Bhaktivedanta Swami wrote the book about Krishna. And he asked everybody to read the book and to try to understand Krishna. Then, after that, then there's a preface written by Prabhupada, the preface which is about how the book came about, why the book is being written. And Pra so Prabhupada begins, he says, uh, when people see the cover of the book, they will say, who is Krishna? Who is the girl with Krishna? <laughs> <laughs> because in the Western country, people that did, they didn't know who was Krishna. They didn't know. They don't have that culture. <laughs> So then Prabhupada goes on to explain that Krishna means the Supreme Personality of Godhead and he's all attractive. And then talks about the, the opulences of Krishna, the six opulences which Bhagwan has. And he says how there are many people, some people are very rich, some people are very strong, some people are very famous. But Krishna has all the opulences more than anybody. So there was, there's, we do not find anybody who has all the opulences except Krishna. And he explains how Krishna came on this planet 5,000 years ago and he stayed for 125 years. But 
the people who study history, they don't have a proper information about what the world was like in the past. They don't know that people have been living on the planet for millions of years. They think it's only recently that humans have come to live on the planet. So they don't understand that they don't that it's, it's very difficult for these people to accept the information which is given in the Vedas and in, in all the ancient scriptures. People are often in ignorance about the nature of God that they cannot understand how God has so many wonderful qualities. Sometimes even you've got people, they try to become God, they try to do yoga and meditation and become God. But but they can never equal Krishna. They can never compare to Krishna. So when we hear about the life of Krishna, then we will understand how Krishna's pastimes and his activities are all very wonderful. And Krishna comes to enjoy his pastimes with the different devotees here. So bhakti yoga is the process by which we cultivate our relationship with Krishna. We all like to have a loving relationship with others. We see how people love their family, they love their country, they have they even love their dog. So this isn't human this isn't human nature to to, to want to love. But the, the greatest kind of love is Krishna consciousness. Because when we love Krishna, then we love all living entities. When we feel the greatest pleasure, the greatest happiness. So we have different ways in which we can show love for Krishna. There are five different ways in which we can have an exchange with Krishna. Uh, 
ความรัก Right, we can love Krishna. We can love Krishna as the supreme unknown. He, we can love Krishna like that. That he is supreme, but we don't really know. We don't understand him. <laughs> Then the second way we can love Krishna. Is just like he's the master and we're the servant. Then the third way we can love Krishna. He's the, the supreme friend. We have many friends, but Krishna is the best of all the friends. But some other people they love Krishna as their child. They take Krishna as their child. Just like when you have a child, then naturally the mother and father they love the child. They take care of the child all the time. So Krishna is the supreme child. And then the fifth, the fifth kind of way in which we can love Krishna is simply as a lover, thinking of him as the, the, the greatest lover. The, the, just like men, women, they, they love each other. So Krishna loves the gopis like that. That's the greatest love. So Krishna enjoys these different exchanges with his devotees. Just like in the spiritual world, if we go back to Krishna, we will have a relationship with Krishna in one of these exchanges. So when when we develop our love for Krishna. We will see how we, we how our life changes, how we become very peaceful and very happy. Krishna consciousness. Is very easy, something very easy to practice, and it gives so much pleasure. And whatever progress we make in Krishna consciousness, we will never lose it. When we do some service for Krishna, it goes into our spiritual bank account. So, if we try to do other things. If we try to do other, do other. If we do some austerities or make great sacrifices, give a lot of charity, it's not as good as developing our love for Krishna. 
แม้ว่าเราจะทำบุญต่างๆใช่ไหมคะในการให้ทานหรือว่าทำบุญให้อะไรยังไงก็แล้วแต่เนี่ยไม่มีการทำบุญประเภทไหนที่จะสูงส่งไปกว่าการที่เราเนี่ยพยายามพัฒนาความรักที่เรามีต่อพระเจ้า So this book is meant to help people to cultivate their Krishna consciousness. People always we like to read and we like to get knowledge. We like to use time and energy to do these things, so we can do it for Krishna. เพราะฉะนั้นผู้คนอาจจะชอบอ่านนะคะชอบอ่านเรื่องราวความรักหรือว่าชอบอ่านหนังสืออะไรก็แล้วแต่แต่จะเป็นการอ่านหนังสือที่ดีที่สุดถ้าเกิดเราอ่านเกี่ยวกับคริสต์นา and people who make some advancement in Krishna consciousness then they're saved from the great from the danger of losing the human form of life ถ้าเกิดเราเนี่ยปฏิบัติกิจการสำเร็จจนเราพัฒนาในกิจการที่สำเร็จใช่ไหมคะอันนั้นเนี่ยเป็นสิ่งที่เขาเนี่ยได้ใช้ชีวิตมนุษย์เนี่ยไปอย่างมีคุณค่าแล้วเขาเนี่ยทำให้ใช้ประโยชน์ชีวิตมนุษย์ที่ดีที่สุด Okay so then Srila Prabhupada begins his book in the introduction by first of all offering his respects to his spiritual master Prabhupada had a spiritual master. He was trained, educated by his spiritual master. Uh, ท่านเนี่ยมีพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ใช่ไหมคะแล้วก็ท่านก็ได้การเรียนรู้ของท่านก็ได้มาจากพระอาจารย์ทิพย์ If we want to learn anything, we need to have a teacher. So Prabhupada had a teacher, and then, because he was a good student, he became a teacher. After, after his, after his spiritual master. Left the world, he became a teacher. So in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna describes why he came to this planet Earth. Guru Maharaj, we have uh, five more minutes, Guru Dev. Five more minutes. Yes. Really. I... Ne ne for the next class, I will. Uh, we will get the this program, and then we can go for like hour. But this time we are not buying it yet, so they only give forty five minutes. Okay. Can we not yes, come? Sir. Can you not come back after forty five minutes again? You can come back and do it again. Oh yes, yes, yes. That will be great. Yeah, we can do it again next forty-five minutes. Okay. Yeah, we can do like that. So we request all the devotees who are here to, if the line is cut, is join again. Yeah. Because then, if this time is only fifteen minutes, then if we cut it, then we will come again for another one. 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 Then we will come again. We may get disconnected. We will just come back. Yes. So Krishna comes to establish the the principles of life, the religious principles. And to stop all the sinful activities of people on the planet. When there's a lot of sin takes place on the planet, then it creates a lot of problem for the whole planet. We can see just now how we have the COVID up. 
problem because of all the sin which people are doing. So Krishna comes to stop that and to correct the situation. So Lord Krishna has his expansion in the form of Mahavishnu. And Vishnu, is, his job is to do the maintenance on behalf of Krishna. So when people do all the sinful activities, Krishna arranges for Vishnu to come to correct the situation. Just like there are many demons, there were many demons on the planet 5,000 years ago. So, so, so Krishna did not personally kill them, but Krishna's expansion, Vasudeva, Vishnu killed them. But 5,000 years ago, when Krishna came, all of the Vishnu form, Vishnu and all of the incarnations, they all come in the body of Krishna. So when Krishna appeared, Vishnu was with him. In one body. <laughs> Krishna's body contained within it the form of Vishnu. And Krishna's purpose in coming is to enjoy his pastimes with his devotees in Vrindavan. And he wants to attract all of us also to go back to be with him in Vrindavan. So when he comes, the two purposes are served the pleasure of the devotees and to kill the demons. We should, under, we should understand Krishna has his own abode in the spiritual world. It is an eternal place where there is no old age, there is no disease, there is no death. It's not like the material world, like the world we live in here, which is the place of birth and death. But the, sp the spiritual world it always remains. So the spiritual world is called Goloka Vrindavan. And, and the, 
everything there in Goloka is made of special touchstone, touchstone like Chintamani, everything which you, you can touch, it can become anything you want, become gold. And all the trees are desire trees, kalpa briksha trees, whatever you want you can desire, any kind of fruit, any time. And there are many, many cows there which are also surabi cows which provide everything you need. And there are many thousands of goddesses of fortune all there serving Krishna. So Krishna plays his flute and and his, bo his body is like the color of a beautiful rain cloud. And on his head is the peacock feather. And so Krishna is very beautiful, very attractive. He attracts the mind of everyone. Hare Krishna. Yeah, we are back. We are back. Okay, so we'll just try, yeah. try to finish off here what we're doing. We're talking about Krishna and the beauty of Krishna. Yes, good. We can go for another 30 minutes more. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Okay, good. So we're going to hear about Krishna's pastimes. So Krishna came in a family called the Yadu family. And that family comes from the sun from the moon god from the moon god Soma. Just like when Lord Ramachandra came, Lord Ramachandra, he came in the family from the sun god. So Krishna's father, his name was Vasudev. And his father had sixteen wives. Now, 
So, although Krishna, although Krishna appears in this family, he doesn't actually belong to this family. It's just for purpose of appearing in the world. Krishna belongs to everyone, not just to that family. But we say just like the sun, the sun it always rises from the east. It could, it, it, it could come from any direction, but it always comes from the east. So the same way Krishna chooses a family to come in, he makes that family famous. And so when Krishna comes, he does not come alone, but he comes along with his different associates, different uh, friends. Now, from the spiritual world, some come from the spiritual world. And one of them is his older brother. Krishna has an older brother, Balaram. Krishna likes having these relationships. He, just like we enjoy having a big brother and little sisters and everything, so Krishna also enjoys these things. So these pastimes about Krishna can be heard by three kinds of people. There are three kinds of people who can hear them. One kind is the li liberated people. The other is the people trying to become liberated. And the other is the materialistic people who are not interested. Yeah. People like to hear stories. They enjoy hearing stories. So the Krishna book is full of stories. Yeah. We, we like to read books about some man, of different things the man did. So we can read about Krishna, what Krishna did. So even liberated souls, they also like to hear about Krishna. The conditioned souls, uh, no, I'm sorry, liberated soul, not conditioned soul, liberated soul. Liberated souls like to hear about Krishna. Liberated souls also have to do activities because the nature of the soul is to be active. So the liberated souls, act, if they can hear about Krishna, it's not a material activity, it's a spiritual activity. Uh, 
Liberated souls are not interested in mundane things, they're not materialistic, they have no interest in material life, but they are interested to hear about Krishna. And people trying to become liberated, they also take pleasure to hear about Krishna. Because they know that by hearing about Krishna, it will help them to become liberated. And for materialistic people who are not interested in spiritual life, they may say, no, I don't believe in God, I don't believe all this, and th but still they can enjoy reading the Krishna book because there's so many nice stories. Just like ordinary people, they like to read about love stories or they'll read, they'll read some war story or they will read some crime story. So they can get all these kind of stories in the Krishna book. So this hearing about Krishna is good for the people who hear, the audience, it's good for the person who speaks, and it's good for the person who inquires, asks questions. Hmm. Whenever, whenever you have a discussion, talk about Krishna, there will be the audience, some people listening, somebody is speaking, and somebody is asking questions. So these three people, they all benefit from Krishna, from hearing about Krishna. So this topic, this pastime we're going to hear about Krishna, this was originally spoken by Sukadeva Goswami to Maharaj Pariksit in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Maharaj Parikshit was preparing for death. He only had a few days left to live. So he spent his time hearing about Krishna. And he was not even taking any food or water, and he was not sleeping, but he did not feel tired. Haribo?